Experience improvements coming to GTA Online. Rockstar Creator updates, new ways to track career progress, balancing adjustments, and more. This is released on the 8th of June, 2023. As part of next week's explosive new GTA Online update, featuring new missions, vehicles, events, and much more, we're continuing to improve the online experience with a number of experiential updates and upgrades across all available platforms. So that, I guess, it includes Xbox One and PS4. Here's a brief rundown on some of the things you can expect when GTA Online San Andreas Mercenaries arrives on June 13th. Okay, we have a picture of some taxis. Uh, no idea if these clothes are new. I'm not really big into clothes. Vehicle updates. The ability to claim all destroyed vehicles at once when filing a Moore's Mutual Insurance claim. It's a small fin in my opinion and doesn't really belong on the top of a newswire. That should be reserved for like orbital cannon nerfs or something like that. But uh, it is nice all the same. Let's see. Moore's Mutual will no longer charge for recovering personal vehicles destroyed during contact missions. Okay, so not during missions. I don't know if that means anything regarding, you know, player versus player though. Custom description tags for garages to help quickly locate your favorite rides when calling the mechanic. Can we give them names? The ability to select from individual floors when requesting vehicles from the Eclipse Boulevard garage. I don't really... I don't even have that. Pressing D-pad right will engage stealth mode on the new F-160 Raiju plane. Vertical takeoff and landing, VTOL, will move to L3 slash left stick. Holding L3 slash left stick when flying all VTOL aircraft will switch it into and out of VTOL mode. Okay, so this was actually mentioned as a possibility by one of my subs, I think. I do remember someone saying, hey, maybe it's... Because uh, they noticed that the wheels went up at the same time as VTOL going on. So, this does have stealth like the Akula, actually, which is not what I thought. I thought it'd be more like the Alkanos. But it does have stealth on demand by pressing right on the D-pad. VTOL will now be moved to holding the left stick. Alright, so that is instantly a bit more powerful than I thought it would be. The option to re-request an active MOC, Avenger, or Terabyte delivered closer to your location via the interaction menu. So I think that means right now if you call one and it appears, and if you want it to get nearer to you, that's it. You've got to, you know, wait a cool down. You've got to put it back away and then cool it up again. I think this means you can just cool it again and it'll be put nearer to you. There are additional filters for race types when browsing the jobs menu. Willard, Eudoria, and Albany Classique Broadway will be eligible for taxi work when using taxi libraries. See, these are the kind of things that I really don't think are big enough news to be on a newswire. Something like, oh, the new plane, or, oh, you know, big new changes, but, oh, there are the new filters? No one cares about that. What the hell? Oh my god. Lesser used vehicles will be removed from in-game websites to streamline the browsing experience. These vehicles will be made available via events, showrooms, for Lucky Wheel, and other places. Okay, so I hope they're not gone forever, but it might be time to uh, stock up on some things that are going to become rare then, because the Lucky Wheel? Good luck getting them on that. I don't like that. Not one bit. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's just more fear of missing out. Gameplay updates. Here we go. Here's some big stuff. Let's see. I don't see anything new here. That could be a new car in the background. Not sure where that is. Uh, let's get to the gameplay updates. A new register as boss option in the interaction menu. Merging secure serve and motorcycle club. 
So there are no longer secure serve and there's no longer CEOs and MCs. It's now just bosses. Why not just make it available to everyone? Because uh, this whole thing where, oh, there's a limited amount of, uh, you know, uh, slots available. I don't like that. There is a buy all option when purchasing body armor at ammunition. Rank requirements for body armor are also being removed. Again, why is that news? Like, that is the most nothing burger of a change that you could imagine. It's like, oh, wow, there's a buy all option at ammunition, which nobody goes to because they just buy it from the menu. Body armor will be restocked after quick restarting a mission, matching the same body armor levels as when first entering the lobby. No one cares. Nobody cares about that. Stop taking up all the... Like, this is their chance to tell us about big, important changes, and they're telling us about, oh, there's a buy-all option at ammunition. Your armor will be repaired if you retry. Like, these are not big news. Jesus. <laughs> when equipping body armor via the weapon wheel, the type of armor used will be relative to how much damage the player has taken. Okay, whoopee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good to know. When parachuting or in freefall, players will no longer receive phone calls from Tom Connors or English Dave. <laughs> okay, okay. When parachuting or in freefall, players will no longer receive phone calls from Tom Connors or English Dave. Very specific names there as well. I know those ones are annoying everyone. Madrazo Dispatch Services no longer requires multiple players and can be taken on solo. Uh, that was a chain of missions, wasn't it? There is an alternative sprint control, hold to sprint, in the settings menu. That should save many an A button, I think. Players will be able to select a name for their acid product via the interaction menu to receive a 5% cell bonus. Rank requirements for daily objectives will be removed to allow more players to participate. Again, no one cares. Stop taking up, you know, they could be telling us about the jet nerf, which they're probably going to have. They could be telling us about the orbital cannon. They could be telling us about the Mark II. Big changes that people are actually interested to hear what they're doing with them. And they're telling us about body armor. They're telling us about daily objectives. Oh my God. Excuse me. Okay, here I see, that looks odd. Is that a B11 or something else? Here we have a laser, that's clear. Here we have a Hydra. What? And no, I think it is a B11, yeah. It just looks a little odd. It looks like it's sort of merged with the engine there. And it makes it have a sort of lumpy round shape. But that's definitely a B11. Okay, our three main jets, I guess. Here we go. Here's the good stuff. Oh my god. Oh my god. I, I saw the word orbital cannon. I'll get to it in a moment. Uh, we'll hide it for now. Pouncing updates. Payouts on many collectibles and events, such as buried stashes and treasure chests, will be increased. We're also correcting payouts for Gerald's last play, because we all want to know about Gerald's last play. Uh, and a super yacht life as well, whatever, that's buffed a bit. Rebalancing weapons on the P996 laser and Mammoth Hydra, free mode only. So what there's, I imagine they're just swapping it for the rogues, cannons, or the B11s ones, which as we saw earlier in the stream, they're absolutely terrible. But uh, okay, some larger streamers can stop moaning and moaning about them now, I guess. Uh, oh well. The orbital cannon can no longer be instantly reset or refunded to prevent players from being repeatedly targeted. How about just getting rid of people being targeted at all? That's what everyone's been complaining about. Now, this should just be a given that you don't get fucking refunded every single time you miss. I mean, Jesus, you're missing with an auto-aim weapon, and you expect to be refunded for that. <laughs> like, what a fucking joke. I'm sorry, but really. Uh, yeah, that... Nah, nah. They should have got rid of it altogether the auto targets and that's what everyone's been asking them to do but they're not doing that for some reason uh let's see 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's good news, don't get me wrong, but it's like the bare minimum that they could do with that. Barely enough. It's been like that before. They're just restoring it to what it should be. Career progress. Track your criminal activities of career progress. A new feature that displays your progression as you rise through the criminal ranks and establish your empire. Been there, done that, already established it. This will be accessible on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X slash S from the GTA Online main menu, or the pause menu, making it easier for both fresh-faced players and veterans to see all their accomplishments at a glance. I don't need to see my accomplishments. I know I've done everything. It's all there is to it, really. It's just for new players. Possible new car and someone's gravestone. And memorial T E Recordamos in Love and Memory 12 16 86. There's gotta be a reason that they've made it clear enough to read, because usually it probably wouldn't be. So they're saying something there. Maybe that's Halloween. Look, there's pumpkins. Creator updates. We're always amazed by the ingenuity of the GTA Online community. I am really not. I am uh, not amazed by their, their ingenuity whatsoever. I think most of them are pretty fucking stupid, actually. Uh, well, these ones aren't, I guess. Creating the incredible death matches, races, and more featured in our regularly updated community series. Okay, that lot, all right. A number of additions and updates are being made to the Rockstar Creator to continue fostering the kind of imaginative chaos that can only be experienced in Southern San Andreas. Some of these Creator updates include Dozens of new props are available in all Creators, including giant license plate walls, okay, the cola cans, destructible fences, that sounds somewhat useful, Underwater mines, I like the sound of that if they actually work, and more. Snow weather option for death matches, races, and survivals. Plus, Halloween themed additions arriving later this year. That sounds good. Option to toggle musical score on and off. You can already do that in a pause menu if you don't want it. Option to distinguish teams by assigning outfits. I guess that's good. Death matches will now have options for dynamic teams. Players can change teams when respawning and health drain. The players lose health over time. This sounds like overcomplicating things a bit. Plus new radar blip options, the ability to lock time of day and weather options in the lobby. Options to choose respawn time for item and weapon pickups and much more. There is an increased number of enemy spawn points in survivals. Did we really need that? I thought there were enough already, but okay. Fixture removal will be available in the Kin of the Hill creator, and the prop limit on PC will be increased to 300. Totally meaningless for any of us on console, then. We always look forward to seeing what the community cooks up. Oh, yeah. Tag your creations of hashtag community series on Rockstar Games Social Club and on Twitter slash Instagram for a chance to see your job featured as part of a community series. We'll be sharing more information soon and detailed patch notes when GTA Online San Andreas Mercenaries launches. Stay tuned for more information here on the Newswire. What I don't like, what I really don't like, is that they've taken up valuable space on this post that could have been used to tell us about actual important changes they've taken that up instead with telling us stuff like <laughs> what was it what was it there's filters on race types when checking the menu like, does anyone even know what that means or oh body armor <laughs> will be restocked after quick restarting a mission matching the same body armor levels as when first entering the lobby like they're just they're puffing it out with stuff that means absolutely nothing and that nobody cares about. That that irritates me a bit. Uh, if we scroll past all the crap, all the nothing posts, we can find the good ones. Well, good. Good as in somewhat meaningful. Uh, 
the orbital cannon can no longer be instantly reset or refunded. I, I mean, it's way too little, way too late. I don't understand why they haven't just removed the auto targeting. It is never used in any mission or any heist. There's only one place the orbital cannon is used in a mission, and that is in the Doomsday Heist, where you manually aim. Why there is such a thing as auto aim aiming someone with a space cannon, God only knows, and everyone has been saying it should go, anyone with a molecule of sense in their brain, but they this is what they give us, just, oh, you're not going to get refunded anymore. Nah, we need the auto targeting gone, just completely gone. Uh, but it's an improvement. It's not an improvement that we haven't seen before. It's always been flickering in and out of, will it refund you? Will it not? This just confirms it won't ever be refunded from now on, which is good. But auto targeting should not exist. Why on earth they would give us this measly bit of nothing instead of just actually removing the auto targeting? I don't know, if they wanted to really get people on their side, that would have been one to actually go with, but we got this sort of half and half bit of nothing. Rebalancing weapons on a P996 laser and Mammoth Hydra. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. They're, they're probably just going to ruin them. If they're anything like the B11 or the, what you call it again, the... Uh, Oh, what's the name? The, you know, the Rogue, the Rogue. If it's anything like the B11 and the Rogue, just forget about those being any use whatsoever then, because those just absolutely suck. Um, eh, maybe they won't make them quite that terrible, but I, I imagine they will be. It's the lazy thing, isn't it, to just swap them for this ultra-low fire rate, tiny blast radius, tiny damage, bit of nothing cannon. All right, ranting a bit there. Uh, they don't mention the Savage, so that's good. We've got a cannon on that that actually works like a cannon. Uh, and I imagine, like, you've got three big updates here. You know, the Orbital Cannon, everyone wants to know about. The Jets, everyone's curious about. And then this, where we buffed the payout on some mission that no one remembers. So, yeah, okay, that, that one belongs here. Uh... The other big bit of info. Pressing D-pad will engage stealth mode on the new F-160 Raiju plane. VTOL will move to L3 slash left stick. So, click and hold the left stick to go into VTOL mode. Uh, click and hold it to go out. And then right on the D-pad will engage stealth mode. I imagine that pretty much confirms that it doesn't have countermeasures then. Unless they're activated by the co-pilot. But I, no, no, it's a one-seater plane. There's not two seats in there. So yeah, I'm going to say no countermeasures. Aren't, they might have changed the button. Just throwing that out there, but probably not. Uh, I think I'm about done with this. If you want to see some of my GTA videos, I'll probably put them here. If you want to see some of my playthroughs of other games, I'll put them around here. Maybe Resident Evil 4 Remake and Ace Combat or Resident Evil 2 or something. But for now, this video is wrapped up.